Hello everyone. Today on the Hillbilly Files, uh, we'll be exploring what it was really like to be a coal miner back in the day. Uh, we'll be visiting a couple different different kinds of coal mines, you know, tell you a little bit about it, show you some stuff, that sort of thing. Uh, I'm sure you've probably all heard stories, you know, horror stories about what it was like back in the day to work in a coal mine, to be a West Virginia coal miner. The truth is, it was actually much worse than that. Uh, it was much worse than, you know, the stories that you've heard. Uh, like I said, we'll be visiting a couple, a couple different kinds of coal mines today. This one here um, is, uh, we're on the Hatfield-McCoy trail system. Uh, I'm out in the Can-Am today. I've got it blocking wind from the microphone right now. Uh, multi-purpose vehicle uh, <laughs> but uh, this here uh, this was what was known as an old truck mine. So a lot of you uh, that are trail riders probably been by this point you know this is a very it's a very popular spot but uh, anyhow this was what was called uh, a truck mines now this one dates back quite a bit you can tell by the the stonework around this um, a lot of you have heard of the the CCC, Tennessee Valley Authority, that sort of thing after World War II. Uh, a lot of those people, uh, you know, the government got a lot of people to just generally do a lot of stuff, that sort of thing. It was a work program. But uh, you can tell their handiwork. Uh, this is most likely they did this, you know, on their day off, that, that sort of thing. Uh, make a little money on the side. But uh, this here, this was, like I said, this was called a truck mines. Now, this was more or less, these were owned by locals. Um, just someone who owned the land and knew there was coal on it and simply started getting the coal. Next thing you know, my brother comes along. He says, hey, Leo, I burn coal too. You care if I get some? No, help yourself. <laughs> Next thing you know, our cousin comes along. And he says, hey, boys, there's three of us. We can make some serious money off of this thing. Now, back in the day now, this is before all of the, the, the regulations and the rules and the mineral rights and, you know, and all that sort of thing. You see, back in the day, if you bought a piece of land and there was coal on it, you now own a coal mine. Nowadays, if you buy a piece of land and there's coal on it, if you don't have the mineral rights, well, guess what? The government owns a coal mine, not you. And we're going to tell you what it's worth, not you. So that's that's how that works now. But uh, anyhow, uh, like I said, this this right here, believe it or not, this was a paradise job. There's actually stories, uh, a couple stories that I know of from back in the day of guys who actually fought to the death, fist fought to the death, killed each other over these kinds of jobs. Um, among other things, I mean, you can see, you can stand up in there, you can work, you know, all that sort of thing. More importantly, you know, these guys, they, they actually paid you, you know. <laughs> that, that's, that's a pretty big difference right there. But um, uh, my, my grandparents, as a matter of fact, I've told this story to, I don't know how many, God only knows how many trail riders over the years. But uh, my mom, you know, coal mining history, you know, you get it, I'm sure. She used to tell this story and she probably told it a thousand times before she passed away. And you know how that goes. Once you get, you know, 80, you'll, you'll tell the same story again. <laughs> I'll probably do it too. But anyhow, uh, I, I know the story well. Let's just put it that way. Uh, <laughs> on her ninth birthday. Now, she had just turned nine that day, right? Just barely, barely, like nine years and five minutes, that kind of thing. Uh, her parents, my grandparents, right? They told her that she was a big girl now. She was old enough to dynamite the coal mine by herself. <laughs> I, I think with regulations, I think you got to be 12 now to buy dynamite. <laughs> anyway, they gave her 10 cents, right? And they sent her to the company store. Now, for 10 cents, you got two sticks of dynamite. She said they were right there on the shelves, right beside mason jars. Mason jars, dynamite. <laughs> now, children, 
could buy this, right? A two-year-old with a nickel could buy a stick of dynamite. Yeah, that's how it worked. Now, <laughs> what you do, okay, what you do, now this is, uh, you go back in your, you go back in your mind, right? And you either find a natural crack where you need to blast. If there is no natural crack where you need to blast, okay, you can either, you have two options. You can either take a small auger, it looks like one of those little whisk things, and make a small hole, or you can take a pick and make a hole. Once you get the hole made, you take your, dy uh, your dynamite, and you put your dynamite back in the hole. You poke a little hole in the end of it. Now, wealthy people, they used to use what we call cannon fuse today, you know. Uh, it has little marks on it, you know, one minute, five minutes, ten minutes. You can, you, can, you can tell how much time you've got, in other words. You know, you can have a, a five-minute piece if you have a long way to go, whatever. Whatever the case may be. Poor people, like my grandparents, okay, they, they couldn't afford that sort of thing. You know, they, they were doing good to afford the dynamite, you know, really. What they did, uh, this was a common practice now. They used what was called squibs. What you do is you take a piece of paper and you fold it in half. You put gunpowder in there and twist it. You ram that into the end of that dynamite, light the end of it, and you run like hell. <laughs> now, <laughs> all right, I quit. No, I probably won't. <laughs> anyway. Uh, th it was common knowledge back in the day. Now, this everyone who used squibs knew this, okay? If you trip for some reason, you die. Period. End of discussion. Just a simple trip. That's it. You, you're dead. You see, you don't actually have to be inside that coal mine to die. If... I were to let off dynamite in there right now, it would kill me where I'm standing. The concussion will come out of that thing and it can actually crush your lungs like a pop can. Yeah, it can kill you all the way out here. It's an extremely dangerous job. Uh, for gen several generations have called it the most dangerous job on earth. Several generations have. But anyhow, uh, like I said, you know, this was this was a good job. Now, like I said, you could you could stand up in here you could work, you could move around, all that stuff. Now these, these coal barons, um, you know, you can't really have a discussion about coal, coal mining, Appalachia, you know, without bringing them up, you know, without bringing up to make one massacre at least. But uh, that, that's another story. That's a, a long drawn out story. We have, we have some of it up. Uh, one of our older videos, if you'd like to check some of that out, uh, you're more than welcome to. But uh, anyhow, these, these coal barons, you see, these guys, they would go after any coal seam 18 inches or higher. Now, guys, I don't know if you grasp the severity of what I just said. We're talking a crack that's 18 inches high. About right here. Okay, I don't want to exaggerate. About right there. If you went in on your belly, you're on your belly all day long because it's not even high enough to roll over. Well, that's how bad it was. It gets worse. <laughs> Hadn't started getting worse yet. You see, you may have to crawl two or three miles. Yes, miles. Back in this little tiny crack just to get to work, just to get where you're going. That's not work, that's just to get there, okay? You haven't even started your day yet. When you get back in there, you start your day. Now, have you ever heard that Tennessee Ernie Ford song, you load 16 tons and what do you get? You expected to load 16 tons. Yes, you heard me right, 16 tons. If you don't do it, you're fired. Yes, but uh, anyhow, uh, these coal barons, they, they were, you know, much worse than that. They, they, were, they were some pretty devious people. They would, 
uh, you know, like we mentioned in the other video, you know, they would go to colleges or go to uh, like the way colleges go to uh, other schools to recruit players. They would do that with unemployment offices and they would promise you the moon, you know, to get you to take the job. And then when you get down here, that's when, you know, everything just went bad, you know, long story short. Uh, it's a long, 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 long drawn out story, but long story short, they, they killed you. They, in the end, you got killed. Simple as that. But uh, like I said, I'm going to swing by a couple other coal mines. I'm going to show you or another coal mine here in a minute. Uh, I'm going to show you this one real quick. This one, it goes back in here a pretty good ways, and then it kind of turns off to the right just a little bit. Back in the day, uh, before they put the grade up, you know, when they did the, the trail system, you know, to keep people from going back in the coal mine. Uh, back in the day, we used to, you know, go back in there. You know, I, I've waited out a, a storm or two, once or twice. But uh, anyhow, I'll go show you around a little bit. Now, it's, it's full of beer cans. I'll just tell you that up front. Uh, <laughs> this is a popular spot for trail riders, and for some reason, some people just like to throw beer cans in there, I guess. I don't I, I, I don't have an explanation for it. I'm just telling you. But anyway, <laughs> let's show you inside of real quick. Can you see the beer cans? I don't know how well you can see those. But yeah, they look to be about three feet deep of beer cans and stuff. Beer cans, a few pop cans, sticks, whatever. But anyway, I don't know how well you can see back there. But now, like I said, this was a this was a really nice one. You know, it had a nice top on it. The, the top has been finished for a ways, anyhow. Wild looking, isn't it? Imagine going in there all day long. See, the thing about them, you know, not just... Now, this was, like I said, this was a, a truck mine. This was a family-owned, small family-owned operation, that kind of thing. But now, the, um, you know, the bigger ones, the regular coal mines, when you went in those, among other things, you, you literally, you gave up daylight. Seriously. You went in... Uh, let me get this thing set right. You went in the coal mine before daylight, and when you came back out, it was dark again. When you once you took the job, you you literally gave up the concept of daylight. Yeah, as much as wild as that sounds, you you really did. Uh, and it wasn't just you either. Uh, you know, your your family had to, they had to accept it as well. Because you see these coal barons, you know, now not the locals again, not the, not the local guys. These coal barons, most of them had a policy that um, if, say, a family man, you know, had a wife and kids, that kind of thing. If a family man got killed in the coal mines, okay, a cave in, whatever, you know, an accident, whatever the case may be, his widow, his wife, she had two days to mourn him, one day to bury him, and one day to remarry someone in the same coal mine, or her and the entire family was thrown into the street, knowing that her husband just died in their coal mine four days ago. That is how cheap life was back then. It was said that a mule was the equivalent of 10 men. In other words, if there was a situation, there was a problem, okay? And they had the choice between saving nine men or saving the mule, they would save the mule and let the nine men die. That's just how it worked. Heather's calling me. Talk to you in a minute. Just thought I'd stop for a minute. I know you guys have probably seen countless trail 
videos, but I'm on my way to the second mine and uh, punch mine, one you can go back in and look around a little bit. Now, I thought I'd just break out the camera just for a second and show you a little bit of the trail just for a second. Uh, we're at the head of Lit Creek, right there. And we're on trail 26 right now. Just thought I'd show you a little bit of it. I won't bore you to death with it. It's just a cool spot. There's a little creek crossing. Bobcats right here once not long ago as a matter of fact mom they usually run but she had two babies so she didn't run she just stayed there beautiful a lot of people don't come here in the winter time but I love it I think it's beautiful all year round it's like Heather it's beautiful whether it's angry or happy or sad beautiful either way I do for a living by the way just in case any of you didn't know yes sir <laughs> you're gonna work for a living folks you may as well do something fun right <laughs> anyhow I'm gonna head on up I've still got a little ways to go to get to the mine this is on the way uh, to stop to show you that real quick uh, that is the remnants of a strip mine. They strip mined the top of this mountain decades ago and filled in an entire valley there. And you can see it all the way from way down in there. Filled the entire valley in. And there's a little pond up top up there. But I just thought I'd show you all that since we were going right by it. 
wild though, isn't it? That's a lot of dirt. Imagine how much dirt that is. To fill an entire valley. How many truck loads? That's a lot of dirt, folks. Some of you may recognize the holes, recognize this spot from uh, our video on uh, how to find fossils and what to do when you find them. Uh, the fossil bed area starts about 30 yards right down there. Uh, I brought you back here today because, you know, this is obviously something totally different. And this is a really good spot to show you some stuff that uh, I'd like you to see. Now, the holes behind me are, they're called punch mines or auger mines. And I'll show you a little bit about. Now these came along sort of, you know, at the, at the tail end, that kind of thing of the period that we're talking about in question here. Uh, <laughs> uh, these, as you can see how round they are, now, these are mechanically done. Uh, it's, it's called an auger. They bring, it's basically, it's more or less a truck with a great big drill bit on it. And they'll run the thing through and it pulls out the coal as it goes. When it starts pulling out rock, they know they're out the other side. So they pull it out, drop it down a level, and bore another hole. When they get to the bottom of the scene, they simply move over and repeat the entire process until they get all the way around and you can see I'll step over here get back here a little bit so you can see what's going on and you can see they start they start over there they start over there and they go all the way down around the hill that's where the fossil bed starts right over there by the way but anyhow you can see it's underneath you know, a whole mountain on top of it. You can see that. Uh, this one's also, this is the one that they strip mined. I showed you on the way up. That's the old pile right there. I showed you on the way up, the dirt pile. But anyhow, these here, now like I said, these are mechanically done. Uh, these weren't necessarily the kind that had a whole bunch of coal miners in them. But I brought you here because I wanted to show you some stuff. You can, And you can actually see the inside you know you can see the inner workings and see what's going on but anyhow the reason I brought you here now I got my fancy high-tech prop right there okay we're hillbillies that's how we roll y'all we don't we don't do expensive props we use sticks <laughs> what I wanted to show you if you look now we're going underneath the ceiling of this rock ledge just for a little bit what I wanted to show you you see the dark patch right there now if you look close you can clearly see you know, I think in theory it's we'll see how the GoPro does <laughs> in theory <laughs> you can see that that is a fossilized tree that's a piece of fossilized wood inside that rock now if you look let me get my fancy prop again if you look you can see a limb off of it here you can see a limb off of it there and you can see another limb back here okay and we're done with the fancy prop all right good job <laughs> back up a little bit now what that is that is a fossilized tree stuck inside that rock. And if you look, you can see it clearly from here. You, can, you should be able to see the limbs and stuff. But now what happens in, you know, coal mines, the kind that have, you know, people in them, you know, not, not these. Like I said, these are mechanically done. Uh, what happens is you go in there and, you know, you're just working and, you know, you're, you're in this god-awful hole in the dark trying to drag rock out. Uh, but you tunnel under this thing and well, you, you tell me, 
if you get in there right now and start tunneling underneath that, what's it going to do? That's right. It's going to fall. <laughs> now, it's going to come out, and that thing weighs, God only knows, you know, how big. How, it's very flat, so I'm assuming that's a really big tree. But that's actually pretty rare for them to fossilize that way. They normally, what they'll do, let me get back here where you can see. You see how the bottom of that gets wider? They'll normally, they will fossilize standing upright. And what happens is right along in here, down here where the weak spot is, when you tunnel underneath that, that'll crack right across there. And the whole bottom of that thing will come out. And, you know, obviously a lot bigger than this one. This is a small tree. But um, it looks, the way it comes out with the root ball and everything, the way it fossilizes, it looks like the bottom part of a tea kettle. And they call them kettle bottoms. You know, like I said, because it looks like the bottom half of a tea kettle. But they can weigh many, many, many thousands of pounds, you know, when, when they fall out. If you are the lucky coal miner, Okay, now let's just get this right. If you are the lucky one, you are directly under that thing and you got smashed instantly. If you were the unlucky ones, you got caught behind this thing. And I guess you know what happens. You die real slow in the dark. Yeah, that's what it was like. That's what being a coal miner was like. From the minute, the second you stepped inside that coal mine, you knew that your life was in danger. You're going underneath millions and millions and millions of tons of rock, and you're tunneling under it. Common sense will tell you that there's going to be a whole lot of places or stuff like our little friend right there is just waiting on you. There have been thousands of coal miners over the decades that have been killed by fossils. Just something as simple as that. An old, an old tree is all it is. But, you know, there's, there, there was lots of other ways. There's a thousand ways, you know, to get killed coal mining. You know, it's the most dangerous job on, on earth. You know, they've it's been said for decades it's the most dangerous job on earth. But we did it. Anyhow, what I want to show you right out here, this is where the big one is that you can go back in. And I want to take you in there and show you some stuff. You will like this. This is really cool. I promise. <laughs> I brought a lot of trail riders out here over the years. And right here, if you look right here, you can see where an entire fossilized tree is stuck inside that rock right now. Uh, you can see little imprints from the bark on the rock when it all solidified, there's an entire big tree stuck inside that rock right now. And you can see it hanging out. Now imagine a 10 foot piece of that, what it would weigh. Yes, that would hurt. But anyhow, like I said, this is, this is the fossil bed. Uh, I, we've picked thousands of fossils out from here over the years, you know, trail riders. I made a video up here. If you guys want to check it out uh, a couple months ago, whatever. I got this one little spot right there. I took out three rocks. And you can see, you know, you can see all kinds of fossils in that one. And in that one, that one, they're just, they're all over the place. But anyhow, uh, I took out three rocks and cracked them over here on this the best way to do it's with a, a hammer and a screwdriver you know you pry them apart pry the layers apart gently 
and we found all kinds of crazy extinct tree bark and animals and insects and plants and all sorts of stuff i mean there's right now these are these are the rejected fossils you know that people <laughs> excuse me these are the ones people have left behind okay <laughs> and you can see the wood you know you can see the wood grain all over the place there 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 there, there. i mean you know everywhere we found all kinds of stuff here i found a what turned out to be part of a fossilized snake. Now, I mentioned this before in one of the other videos. It was right there. And um, this young girl found it. And I mentioned it to another another group about a year later. And they had another. It was a totally different young girl. And she got in there and found the back half of that snake. Now, how wild is that? But anyhow, we pulled out all kinds of fossils here. You, you get the point. But <laughs> back to the cult. Okay, now, these here are also punch mines. Let me back up. This is part of the same thing, obviously. There's the defender, and there's where the mines start back there. They go all the way around the hill and back out through that way. But right there, you can see where the center of that one's taken out, and we'll go into that a little bit more detail about that in a minute, why and all that sort of thing. What I wanted to point out... Remember I mentioned the fossils? Look right up here. I'm going to try to get this up closer. It's got bee, a bee nest in it now, but you know. Now that is what's called a fossil remnant. It's an imprint in the rock when it's solidified of some ancient shelled sea creature that got stuck there in that rock the only way that our little friend could have gotten stuck there is for that spot to be at the bottom of the ocean don't sound like it's that complicated does it look how high we are We're about, give or take, we'll say 2,000 feet above sea level, okay? Now, from here, over this way, there's another, over that way, there's another, we'll say 1,000 feet of rock on top of this, all right? The only way for our little friend to have gotten stuck there was for this spot to be at least 2,000 feet under the ocean. The only way that that much mountain could have formed on top of this was for it to be underneath the ocean, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, about 3,000 feet under the ocean. Imagine that. This spot, okay? <laughs> 3,000 feet under the ocean. Just, I mean, can you picture that? <laughs> that is wild, is it not? <laughs> but anyhow, it has to do with uh, that geological terms, you know, Pangea. Uh, before that, the earth, uh, the, what the, UI, the continent, I should say. Uh, back in the day, the continent, you know, we're not going to get into the details of dates and all this kind of stuff because some of it is questionable. But suffice it to say, back in the day, <laughs> that the continental United States got down to about sea level and was sinking. When it gets down to sea level, the ground, it gets wet, it gets saturated, all that sort of thing. You know, you get it. As it gets wet, all these peat bogs start to form. Now, as the ground continues to sink, it takes these peat bogs with it, and they can be hundreds or even thousands of feet deep. It takes these things all the way to the bottom of the ocean, these peat bogs. Now, as all this stuff, sediment, silt and water, that sort of thing, settles on top of these peat bogs, it forms entire mountains on top of these peat bogs, okay? It compresses them down and compresses them into coal. Now, later, when Pangea, that's basically all seven of the world's continents smashed together into one supercontinent, you know, and formed the Appalachian Mountains, you know, you can, you can look into that, too. It's, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty easy to find stuff. But uh, anyhow... Uh, it pushes all this stuff back up and, you know, back up to here where you can actually, you know, it's kind of hard to imagine that that right there, 
you know I picked up a piece a minute ago that right there it's hard to imagine that that little piece of rock was at one time it was living plants and animals that sort of thing you know like us we're all carbon based if you put us in the ground we'll turn to coal if you leave us long enough and enough time and enough pressure we'll eventually turn to diamonds now imagine that. You didn't know you were a walking diamond, did you? Well, you really are. Imagine that. <laughs> so ladies, point that out to your husband when he gets mad at you. Hey, I'm a walking diamond. Back off. <laughs> Anyhow, I, I, I quit. Sorry, guys. I quit. <laughs> anyway, what I wanted to show you uh, on the inside, one of the things I wanted to show you, a couple things in here I want to show you. Uh, do you remember when you were a little kid, right? You remember playing in the creek when you were little, how the water would make swirl marks in the bottom of the creek, right? You you remember that, right? Okay, look here. No, we're not going far. We're just going just a little ways, just enough to show you something. What I wanted to show you is right there. Now, if you look, you can see the curves that an ancient creek made here millions of years ago. You can actually see the curves that the water made in that. Is that not amazing? It's wild, isn't it? And just look at that. That's the coal. There's two kinds. There's bituminous and anthracite. Anyhow, one of the other things I wanted to show you. Oh, yeah. That, that uh, one of our trail riders brought that. I don't know if you can see the rock right there in the middle. Uh, we'd Like I said, I do tours. One of our riders brought that a couple months ago. And, you know, people hide. They paint rocks on the trail system. You know, people do. And then someone else finds it. And they relocate the rock to somewhere else. Typically, that's what they do. It's just a, it's just a thing. But <laughs> we, they decided they brought that one and decided to put that out. And it says we've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. <laughs> Back in the gold mine. <laughs> Anyhow, this one over here, just in case you're Michael J. Fox and, and you know you get sidetracked and you don't know where you're at. There's your sign. The DeLorean is the next cave over. All right? Okay. Now, we're clear. <laughs> what I wanted to show you. All right. When I quit goofing off, what I wanted to show you. You see how the center section of this has been taken out? From right there where the sign is. Right there. Out the entrance of this. And we're just about, yeah, we're just a few feet in. You can see the pretty view from here. It's great, isn't it? Anyway, that little center section right there, that has been a local who has come up here and got that, uh, that section of coal. Believe it or not, they probably heated their house for two or three years with just that little bit of coal. It is a surprising shocking amount of energy in just a little itty bitty piece of coal right, right here let me get a little tiny one now this thing is not much bigger than my thumbnail you know yeah you can kind of get an idea not very big anyway if you take this little tiny thing right here if you throw that in a fire that thing will stay cherry red for about 20 or 30 minutes. It is an incredible amount of energy in just that little teeny tiny piece of coal. Uh, when we bought um, our house, the, the one we just recently moved out of, uh, it was 4,000 square feet. Uh, it had a big fireplace in it. When we bought the house and the land, there was three tons of coal on the property already. We, you know, we, we inherited it. It came with land. Uh, I used that coal for three years, for three winters. I heated the house with that coal. When the coal ran out, 
uh, Heather, she wanted me to get a, you know, get a pretty wood stove, right? Just something cute, that kind of thing. So I went out and went to Lowe's, and I got a pretty wood stove. And, you know, brass and glass, you know, that kind of thing. And, and I put the stove in. Now, if I go out and I get only the best firewood that you can possibly get, now, I mean perfectly seasoned oak and hickory only, no no trash wood, no no green wood, no just the best, just the absolute best wood you can get. It took a uh, 55 gallon drum trash can uh, of firewood to heat that house for one day. When I used coal, I did the same thing with a five gallon bucket. One five gallon bucket of coal is equal, roughly equal to 55 gallon drum of the absolute best firewood that you can possibly get. That's a, that's like I said, that's an incredible amount of energy in something so small. Now, I'll tell you something else too. I'll tell you something else. You hear a lot of stuff these days, you know, on the news and on TV and things like that um, about dirty coal. You know, dirt coal's dirty. Let's let's do away with coal. Let's, you know, this, that, the other. All you know, all you've heard it. I'm sure you've all heard it. The reality of the situation, okay? Coal provides approximately, depending on who you ask, coal provides approximately eighty percent of the world's uh, power. Uh, <laughs> It provides, for example, it provides 100% of the world's steel. You can't make steel without coal. You have to have coal to make steel. Uh, what you do is you process it. Uh, it's basically heat treated. They process it into something called coke. Not that kind. And, <laughs> and they take that coke and they use it in coke ovens, and that's how, how you melt steel. That's how you do it. Uh, wood, propane, natural gas, uh, hair or spider web or something. Uh, none of those things that they don't get hot enough to melt steel. You have to have coal, period. You have to have coal. When you get right down to it, if you do away with coal, I mean, there's a whole bunch of other things that you could, ex that examples that you could cite. But just the steel alone, just that one thing, just the steel, okay? If you do away with steel, what happens? If you do away with coal, you do away with steel. What? <laughs> Society can't exist that way. <laughs> you have to, you know, you take all these cars, you know, uh, Teslas are cool, you know, they're, they're cool. But, I mean, you think about it, it's, you're using coal to make the steel. You're using coal to make the power. You're using coal to make all of the other little, you know, doodads and watsits and all this stuff in there. And you're still using coal to power the thing, you know. You're just adding six or seven extra steps in between, making it more expensive is all you're doing. When you get right down to it, you know, right down to the brass tacks, okay? How you feel about something, how you feel about something is irrelevant, you know. I, I've, I've explained this before. How you feel about something is completely irrelevant. If you feel like it's a bunny rabbit but it's actually a rattlesnake, you have a problem, do you not? You see my point? <laughs> the reality of the situation is if, if we ever do do away with coal, we go back to the Stone Ages the very next day, folks. That's just all there is to it. This little, this little tiny piece of rock Right here. That little critter right there. That's the only thing separating us from the Stone Ages. We are cavemen without this stuff. That's why all these people did all this stuff and went, all, went through all of this trouble and risked their lives and, and died to get this rock. That's the reason. It was 
like I said, one of the most dangerous jobs ever known to man. The minute you took the job, you knew that your very first day on the job could be your very last day on earth. Just imagine, 16 hours a day. A lot of people did it. I remember my stepdad, he set me down when I was about 15 or so, something like that. And he wanted me to promise that I would never work in a coal mine. You know how it is with teenagers, you know. I, I can remember, you know, kind of playing it off, you know, yeah, okay, whatever. And he got he got serious all of a sudden. And he, he told me to sit down. He, he wanted me to, you know, to sit down. Okay, fine, I sit down. He gets all emotional and he says, I want you to swear to God to me right now that you will never work in a coal mine as long as you live. And I gave him my word that I would never work in a coal mine. To this day, I never have. Had a lot of family that have, though. I've had several family die working in coal mines. I've had a lot of family die from black lung. If everything, if you take this job, if everything goes great and you have a, a really long and illustrious career, you build a home, all this stuff, and everything goes great, it still kills you. If you don't die from an accident in this coal mine, from some sort of an accident, from something falling on you, from whatever, this coal mine will still kill you. You will still get black lung and it will still kill you. You will die from working in this mine. That's just a simple fact. Wild, isn't it? Anyhow, guys. I hope I didn't bore y'all too much. Didn't blather on too long. Uh, anyway. I guess I, I get into it a little bit. But uh, anyhow. Uh, I sure appreciate you guys watching. We really do. We appreciate all of you supporting us. Uh... It's been a wild ride. Uh, you know, this whole YouTube thing's been a wild ride. It sure has. Uh, just since since Halloween, you know, it's it's gone crazy. And we thank you guys. It's it's I, We couldn't have done any of it without you guys. But just this weekend, you know, Saturday, I had had a big tour. You know, had a bunch of trail riders out going to, to historic sites and seeing cool places and all this sort of thing. And then yesterday was out you know, investigating the, the axe murders and, you know, and then today out doing this kind of thing, you know. I, I love showing you all this stuff. I really do. I very much enjoy this stuff. And, you know, we really get a kick out of it, and we, we really appreciate you guys. Anyhow, that, that's my point. That's, that's what I'm trying to get at. I'll shut up now. But uh, thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe and all that good stuff. And you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.